Welcome back to the Truth Channel Inspired. If you're on the podcast or YouTube, thanks for tuning in. If you're new here, this is simply a media platform dedicated to bringing truth to practical subjects. Um, I will point out every truth that we discuss here will be biblically sound. Any way of life that I'm discussing or whatever, it's going to be biblically sound, but that doesn't mean that you have to be Christian to listen to this. I really do believe that these Um, topics are applicable to anyone and everyone. So today we're going to be talking about a really, really fun topic, um, death. (laughs) So stay tuned for the truth about death. I'm Lindsay Frederick, promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Truth about death. Okay, I know this is kind of sounds like like a dark topic and for some it might be and so I'm just you know wearing a bright color to try and light the mood I'm gonna try and talk about this as positively as I can and um, if you're on the podcast sorry you can't see my colors but I'm wearing light pink in case you cared anyways something that recently I've realized in the past couple of years that's like a real thing is this fear of death um, this is something that I can't say I've particularly like struggled with severely I will say I have you know had those thoughts of like what what is is there anything after this life you know you know contemplating with myself and then that will lead you into a place of if there's nothing after death what's the point of this life you know and so yes it's scary because it it really is it's unknown and I I think what the world today is really, really, really good at is getting us to avoid the thought of death. You know, everything that we do in this world just kind of distracts us and keeps us busy so that we're not confronted with this idea that, hey, I'm going to die soon. And so when we're confronted with death, whether it's a family member or even a near-death experience, it can be a truly traumatizing event. So we're going to talk about it really openly today, death. Ecclesiastes 9.5 For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. You are going to die. I'm going to die. I could die in the middle of this video. I could die 50 years from now. We don't, we don't know when. I think that's partially the scary part about it. It's like, we don't know. It, it could happen tomorrow. It could happen today. Whatever. So I don't know when I'm going to die, how I'm going to die, but I know I'm going to die. And as obvious of a statement as that may seem, like, well, yeah, duh, but, like, have you actually processed that? Because in preparation for this video, I was challenged with that, of, like, yeah, I know I'm going to die, duh, this is going to be an easy topic to talk about. But it's like, no, Lindsay, do you know that your life is going to end? Every, you know, like, one day you could come home and your clothes would be on the floor and and you don't come back and your clothes are still going to be, you know, like, life is just going to cease. And that was a really weird thing for me to process and actually kind of heavy. And so I just would ask, like, have you genuinely come to terms with terms with the fact that your life is going to end? And are you ready to die? Or is death going to come upon you? You're like, frick, I didn't do these things. I didn't, whatever, whatever. I didn't consider this. You know, are you going to be pretty frazzled at the end, end of your life? And so how do you come to terms with death? I would say one, we have to acknowledge that this life is temporary. We can't come to terms with death unless we first, like, take a step back from everything around us and realize that all of this, all of these little knickknacks and, and things that we distract ourselves with will be left behind. And so that is actually what my tattoo stands for on my wrist. I don't. I think I've talked about this on the channel before. If you're on the podcast, you can't see this. It's an hourglass thing on my wrist, outside wrist. But basically, one of the meanings for me is that, you know, this life is temporary and not to get too caught up in all the material things because ultimately I have eternity with God to look forward to. And that's something we'll get to later. But Ecclesiastes 5.15. Also, I keep referencing Ecclesiastes. Um, This is a great book that kind of just confronts this idea of everything on this earth, you know, is is passing, is dying away, and like, what's the point? And I would like read that book if you're interested in this idea, Ecclesiastes, but Ecclesiastes 5, 15, as he came from his mother's womb, he shall go again, naked as he came, and shall take nothing for his toil that he may carry away in his hand. So again, that's just emphasizing the fact that, you know, we come into this world naked, we're going to leave naked. And all these things that I've worked for, this laptop that I saved up for, you know, like all these things are, are going to be meaningless when we leave. Have you acknowledged the fact that this life genuinely is temporary? And you might be saying like, you know, why do I want to, th- why, why would I want to think about death? Why would I want to consider that everything I've worked for in my life is going to amount to nothing? Because um, that's so sad, right? 
But actually, what I found is like when I remember this, when I when I acknowledge daily that this life is temporary, it actually leads me into a position of gratitude and appreciation because suddenly I'm not entitled to this day. I'm not entitled to see the people that I'm going to see in this day. I'm not entitled to sit here on the truth channel and record, you know, like every everything around me I appreciate more because I'm like, hey, it's another day. I'm alive. And then again, it takes me back of like these little things really in the grand scheme of things don't matter. And I think once we're able to acknowledge this and, you know, realize everything's temporary, not only are we more appreciative and grateful, but then it brings us to consider, okay, if this is if this life is temporary, is there an eternity? And that's that's the next thing. Number two, we have to consider eternity. Whether you believe in an afterlife or not, this is what I'll say. At the end of the day, no one is 100% positive what happens next, you know? Even someone like myself who has hope of an eternity with God, that that hope and that belief is based on faith. It's a faith-based belief, and faith means believing without seeing. Um, and I think there's an aspect of faith in believing in God, but also there's an aspect of faith in believing that there is no God and that there is no eternity. Whatever you choose to believe, you're putting your faith in something. So I think it's a wise idea to consider everything equally, you know? So have you considered eternity? And when you consider eternity naturally, then that's gonna usually come along with then the belief in God. And so at this point, I'm just gonna kinda talk about um, what God says in the Bible and how this has given me hope and has taken away my fear of death. So I believe that there is an afterlife, whether that's Heaven is like a physical place or whatever. I don't know. That's, I just believe that I'm going to be restored to relate perfect relationship with the creator who made me God. And this eternity is going to be one where humanity is restored to its original design, where there is no imperfection. There is no pain, suffering, all, all this nasty stuff that is on earth. Um, I have the hope of knowing that I will be restored to relationship and I have the faith that I will be restored to relationship with God through the death of Jesus Christ. And knowing this and having the hope in this and the faith that there is an eternal life with God, the, the being that created me, death has become something that is not dreaded in my life and it's actually like a hopeful thing. 2 Corinthians 5 1 talks about this. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. And this this might seem weird that, you know, I have hope in death. I have excitement when it comes to death because that means I will be in a perfect relationship with God because that's so anti-cultural. That's so like everybody in our world seems to be afraid of death and death is is looked at as a negative thing. But that is the hope that, you know, Jesus gives us is that we can then have that peace of knowing, you know, when I die, there's a life after this and it's it's better than this life on earth, let me tell you. Sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I look at this earth and like all the chaos that's happening, especially now in 2020, and I'm just like, God, take me now. <laughs> like, I don't wanna have to see any of this pain, this suffering anymore. Like, can you just like take me away? I wanna be in heaven with you. I wanna be where there is none of this craziness. Um, I just want to leave this place and be with you, the, the thing that created me. And you see that this, this becomes a common thing within people that have the hope of eternal life with God. Uh, through Jesus, in Philippians 1, 23, 34, the author writes, I'm torn between the, d the two. I desire, to be, I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. You know, you have this inner tur turmoil of like, I kind of want to like just go to heaven now. Please take me. But also, I want to give this hope to other people. And I want people to know that death is not something that we need to fear. And so you see that like even in scripture. The saddest thing now that I associate with death is that by me dying, you know, I'm going to, my family members have to experience sadness. My friends have to experience sadness. And so family and friends, if you're watching this, I really just... Let this be known. Please don't be sad when I die. Like, <laughs> rejoice because I'm in heaven and just have hope that I'm in heaven and have faith that I'm in heaven. And, you know, I've experienced a great life and I'm very blessed to have the life that I already have. And if I were to be taken now, that's okay with me. Please don't be sad at my funeral. And that's about it. That's about the only thing that makes me sad when I think about death is the fact that other people may be sad when I die. I have hope of eternal life with God. Not only has this eradicated any fear of death that I have within me, but it has given me 
a purpose to my life. Like suddenly I'm not just like, oh, I live this life and I, I do these things and then I die and it's just a cycle. Like that that mundane cycle idea, idea is like no longer. Like I believe that my purpose is to just share this news that like, hey, this isn't it. This is not the only part of our life. Like there is eternity with a God that lives and you know, people can choose to believe that or whatever, but that's what I believe and I wanna share that with people so that they can not have a fear and that they can have purpose with their life, you know? The next question you might have if you're a little bit skeptical about this is, you know, what if God isn't real? What if I put my faith and hope in a God and it's it's not real? Here's, here's kinda how I view it, is like, if I dedicate my life to Jesus still and it's not true, what's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is I spent my whole life <laughs> Uh, sacrificially loving others and trying to love just like Jesus showed us and there's nothing after you know do you see what I'm saying like okay there happened okay let's say there is nothing after well cool either way I live my life serving others and loving others and being a light in this world that's the worst that can happen if I believe in Jesus and it happens to not be true but what's the worst that can happen if I choose to not believe in in God and that is to put my faith that hey there's there's nothing out there um, after this life and that would be well if Jesus claims he is the way the truth the life nobody comes to the Father except through him that's eternity on the line you know if he is the only way and you choose to say there there is no God that's that's eternal that's eternity you're deciding and so I'll ask again have you considered this have you considered God have you considered no God um, and have you come to terms with death and you might be thinking like oh yeah maybe like later but I would encourage you like this is not something to wait on because one you don't know if you're guaranteed tomorrow you don't know if you're guaranteed tonight it's wise to prepare now and two that will only it'll only help you in this life to appreciate the little things to appreciate the time that we're given on this earth I'll come back to my whole tattoo thing again remind yourself you know everything that this world is trying to distract us with the outfits the cars the money the the jobs the traveling you know like everything is temporary and none of that is going to matter at the end of the day so let's take it back let's take a step back from these distractions and realize and consider one that this life is temporary and two consider eternity what are we going to put our faith in i just want to end with this for those of you that don't know jesus and don't have hope for death you know death is still a scary thing i want to tell you the truth of jesus and of god um we do have a god there is a god and he created us and he created us and was in perfect relationship with us and you know, we have fallen short as humanity. I think we can all admit that we are not perfect, but how are we supposed to be in relationship with the perfect God if we ourselves are not perfect? So he sent Jesus to conquer death, which is the ultimate penalty of our imperfections of our sin is death. That is the price that we should have to pay because of all of the nasty things we do as humans, right? And so he sent his son Jesus down to pay the price for our sin and he died and rose again. Guys, he conquered death. Isn't that so crazy? So if death is something that you feared, there is someone that has already conquered that. He died and rose again so that death would have no grip on us so that we don't have to be fearful of death. And that is the ultimate truth of Jesus. And if that's something that you haven't heard before, that's new to you, I would encourage you to allow that truth to give you freedom. And as we put our faith in the fact that Jesus has conquered death, we don't have to be afraid of this looming thing of death anymore. You know, like I've been talking about this whole podcast, this whole YouTube channel, it can be a hopeful thing. And there is an afterlife and we can have hope to be restored with the one loving God who created us. So if that's new information to you, like I said, consider that, let it sink in, take the time to really contemplate. Have you considered eternity? Um, what what are you, are you gonna put your faith in? So that's all I have for you guys today and there will be more next week.